So today I've been changing the consumer unit, out, the one that you can see in front of you. And I just wanted to talk about a couple of things and issues that I had whilst doing it. So I'll just quickly go through the board. And so we've got, obviously got RCBOs. This one is on at the moment because there's a builder outside, out there. And that's just controlling this socket and another socket just down below. And so that's just got the cement mixer plugged in. So that's the only one that's working at the moment. I've done all the testing, all just on the back of a piece of paper, but everything's all tested absolutely fine. And so I just wanted to just go through some of the issues that I had. So initially when I looked at the job, it was, there was just five circuits. There was just, yeah, five circuits on the old board. I'll put in an extra five circuits because all of the lights were all clumped into one trip and the sockets were also all in one trip as well. So I've just divided everything up. The only problem is I've used a five extra RCBOs. I've also got two circuit breakers here ready for some 10 mil armored cable. Again, they're just in there. Roughly the 10 mil is just, you can see there's two lots there just wired up and that's gonna be feeding two buildings out outside at some point not not for a few weeks anyway again if we look at the top of the board i've put these two in a spare because in the near future we are going to be doing some work in the house and putting in a couple of extra circuits in the house so again i've put these in ready for or it'll just make it easier once it's done again there's a i'll put a blank in this one here but again i can open that up if we need access to it. So it's all quite straightforward. Now, as you can see, we've got a main earth terminal here. I will be putting a label on at some point. And it's only got the bonding to the gas and water is only done in six mil. Now, normally that would be okay because it's only a 60 amp. However, we've upgraded this to 25 mil. It was 16 previous, so that would have been okay. Now they both read really low and the, and the the gas and the water are only the other side of the building and they read pretty much zero on the end to ends of those. But by the way, we are going to upgrade them, just not yet. We're going to upgrade them to 10 mil. Won't do it just yet because we're going to do that in the next few weeks when we do some more work in the house. So the other thing that's being done is that Western Power or the National Grid or whoever they are, they're going to come out and they're going to upgrade all this and put a 100 amp supply in and they're going to do that hopefully next week as you can see we have got this 16 mil earth wrapped here and it's just disconnected so that probably tells you straight away that we're working on a tt earth arrangement and as you can see i've done the zd earth bolt impedance externally it gives me 20.6 ohms and 12 amps of fault current so again that's pretty good for a tt system as you can see nothing is connected to the tt system at the moment let's just go out here and you can see this is the 10 mil used to feed the old earth stake now i hadn't necessarily noticed this straight away as you can see it's not connected to anything at all and apparently it's not been connected to anything at all for the last 15 years it's been in there like that and not been doing a single thing that's all going to come out i'm going to leave it in there just for the time being but obviously the only we've got a pretty low earth fault loop impedance and that's obviously going through the water and the gas pipe it's not actually there is no earth at the moment like i said they were supposed to be out here today while i was doing this to change all this over and convert it all over to pme but that's not been done just yet luckily at the moment the customer's not in so it can just be left turned off like i did say the builder is using this socket at the moment so i've done all my testing on it i've got a good earth fault loop impedance reading and the rcd so this is on circuit number five so again that's the ramp test insulation resistance was 999 obviously on both and then i did it on zero and 180 on both and we've got 38.1 and 18.8 it's all working safely i'm just obviously not too keen on leaving all the electrics on so all that's going to be left on while we're here will be the this socket and the fridge freezer will be plugged into it just looking at the board that we've done i just wanted to talk about a couple of things well it's, it's quite a trend at the moment you're seeing all these distribution boards done consumer units done and they're all really really neat and tidy now i'd probably look at my one and say it's nowhere near as neat and tidy as what some of the boards are done on sort of instagram and youtube one thing i would probably say is that all of my connections twisted up if they're stranded cable they're all doubled back as you can see the the 
CPCs, the earth, they've all doubled back. There's no strain on any of the cables. Everything is done as neat as I can do it. You, you'll notice that all the earths, how I do them, I stick them all at the front like that. A couple of weeks ago, I had to go out to this board that had been upgraded a few weeks previously. There was a fault on it. And all of the CPCs were tucked right in at the back. It was a, I think it was a Hager board. Everything was tucked in at the back. They were cable tied together and you could hardly see them. All you could see was just the ends of the, the earths in the, in the earth bar. Now, if anyone knows anything about fault finding, generally speaking, the first thing you have to do in most faults is disconnect the earth. It was such a game trying to locate the CPC with how it had been done. Obviously, CPCs are all numbered but that doesn't mean that it's the it's the correct CPC. And as it happened, they weren't in the correct order. So I had to disconnect all these earths. It was just such a, it looked, the board looked nice, but to work on it was almost impossible. As you can see, I always bring, I try to always bring my CPCs, my earths to the front. So straight away, you can sort of see they're all in the correct, they're all located in the correct number but straight away if you didn't if you need to disconnect it so for example we've got a ring circuit here on number four if you go to number four there's two cpcs in that so that's for the ring so it just means that everything is easy to get to if i need to i don't know let's say for example i need to get this one it all just comes out and then it tucks back up there relatively nice and neat that's all you need to do again the tails for the rcbo's again they're nice and neatly tucked out of the way. One thing I have done, which I wouldn't normally do, is I've used three mil sleeving. I normally only ever use two mil sleeving on circuits like this. I've only done that because I've run out of, uh, of two mil. So not a fan of using three mil on sort of such small cables, but that's what I've done in, the, in this instance. Another thing to note, I've removed the old transformer that where the doorbell was, that's not being used. So I haven't cut the old wire off. I've just left that tucked up out of the way just in case they're ever likely to use that again the use of washers for the board you often see just the screws being used for that it's, you should really use a washer makes it look neater and so i've put the front cover on i've stuck a couple of labels on there i haven't signed anything yet because i'm gonna have to retest i've done the testing here for, for um, the majority of it um, but i'm gonna have to retest it all again so yeah, so we've got the earth ready there, so hopefully that will be done tomorrow. But this is, a, this is the reality of doing the job sometimes. So, but apart from that, it's all done.